Jay here straight for Paddock, and this is it. This is the big oh, one. Stop Manchester that now. United versus West Ham, the FA Cup fifth round. It doesn't get any bigger than that, does it, Joseph it, Smith? I mean, it literally doesn't. It's not like we've got cup finals, games against Barcelona, games against Liverpool coming up. We've had such an, an uh, incredible uh, uh, run. Are any of those games in football's oldest competition? What, the Sheffield Cup? No, oh. the FA Cup. Oh, no, this no, is this is why we're previewing it with such enthusiasm mm. because it is the oldest competition. Yeah. It's the best if we win it. And you respect your elders. And I you? respect my elders, which is quite difficult for me because I'm so old. Yeah. There's so few people That's that are true. older than me. Yeah, only the papyrus of time <laughs> can tell when you were originally born. I can't tell. Checking out the Library of Alexandria for Jay's birth de uh, records. <laughs> he just says words and I just nod. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> um, seriously, though, right. it, we are potentially on for a Let's trophy be haul. honest. A trophy haul, yes, shall we good, say. Good phrasing, yeah? yeah. Let's be a slightly vague with it. And adding the FA mm. Cup to the Carabao Cup mm. would be immense because some of my fondest memories as a United fan are uh, FA Cup memories. Yeah. And I think if we were to win this competition, in Eric Ten Hag's first season, as well as winning the Carabao Cup, yeah. that'd be pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it would. Um, and like you said, the great thing about winning the Carabao Cup is, and I know this is a bit obvious and it's a bit silly and whatever, but it's it's won now. You can't stop that. You can't take that away. This is now, unless we finish eighth or something implodes, this is now a season that is better than most people thought we'd have. Especially if you're looking at how sort of Again, safe is a tr tr uh, tricky word because anything can happen. But how confident I would say I am about top four. Top four in a trophy was sort of the very much the upper limit of what most people thought we were capable of this season. So anything from there is a bonus. And the FA Cup would be a massive, juicy little bonus as well. So, yeah, it, it's a massive season now where we've gone from being one where it's sort of maybe damaged limitations like we thought it might be after the Brentford and... Um, uh, Brighton games to one where you're looking at going actually this could be our best season in a decade which is bizarre um, yeah. I mean it could be one of our greatest seasons of all time but I don't think we'll get the Premier League um, but yeah it's, it's amazing how things have turned around and now that that League Cup is done we've broken the curse of semi-finals and finals and not been able to win them and we've set off on the, on the best possible foot for the rest of Ten Hag's tenure it's a perfect trophy and the FA Cup would be great to add to that it really would um, if we are going to win the FA Cup and we are going to do anything in the league and win the Europa for that matter. Yeah. We are, or Eric Ten Hag does have to shuffle his pack, he does have to rotate. Yeah. It does feel a little bit like, although the games are coming thick and fast, there are one or two players where they always say, you know, you need a squad of around sort of 14 or 15 players that could be classed as first team players. Yeah. And I think that we almost have that. Yeah. I feel like United, you could make a case to say that Delow is first choice, but so is Wan Bissaka. Yeah. Freddie's first choice, but so is Sabitza. Yeah. You could, you know, there's I think like you could do the same Sancho, with Malassia and Shaw. Yeah, yeah Malassia and Shaw, and and maybe you know you could argue that Sancho and Ganacho and Anthony, Anthony are all sort of first team players because yeah. they all get so many minutes. So it does feel like we do have a squad. Obviously, there's one or two players who are fundamental. Casemiro, Marcus Rashford, for example, yeah. are two players that if anything happens to them we'd be in all sorts of trouble, but that's the case of everyone. With eight games, I think we've played eight games, sorry, in 24 days. Do you see the, the, the squad, is, which has coped really, cope really well, and Eric Tan has coped with it really well, do you think we're going to be able to continue to cope so well with the amount of games that are still on the horizon? Yeah, I think this season we will. Um, yeah. And I think we've got, we've played eight in 24 days. I think we've got seven in the next 23 days, so it's not getting any easier. No. But I think the problem, my, my only concern and this is a very much a sort of luxury position to be in because of how good we've been this season. Yeah. I worry about next season now because I think in the moment, this season, we'll be able to get through all of these games. There'll be some injuries here and then. We've seen Ericsson yeah. go and, you know, Rashford or um, Casemiro, like you said, could have an injury that could affect things. But when you look at what happened to Liverpool last season and then this season, yeah. and we saw it with United, the season we got to the Europa League final and then the year after, where you're playing a lot more games than everyone else, you're playing late into the, uh, into the summer, or sorry, into the start of the summer. And all of a sudden next year, every, everyone's just 2% off it, 5% off it. And accumulatively, when you lose confidence as well, it becomes a really bad season. So my worry is that next year, we won't have the intensity and the energy for this season. And I know it's a bit of a you know pessimistic way to look at things, but I just hope that we've got the reinforcements. And like you said, we've got those players that can 
come in and out and, and save people like Varane. I think he's he obviously retired from international football. The sort of signs of weathering are starting to show there. Casemiro's 31 now. Bruno Fernandes plays every single game, every single week. Um, and I just hope that yeah, there's enough in the squad and enough in the tank that not just this season, but next season, when we really think we want to be pushing for the Premier League title or at least challenging, that we haven't kind of burnt it all out this year because it, it felt like it could be a good season. We could end up playing 70, 69 games this season and winning one trophy. And then you go into next season and you go, we're knackered. So that's my only worry is I think we'll be okay for this run, this seven games in 23. I've just hoped that there's a longer term vision at play here that will stop us having these Liverpool spike, crash, spike, crash seasons because they'll finish first, second, sixth, first, eighth. Like, I yeah. don't want that. I want to be up and maintain it. So, yeah, it's a bit of a long answer. But I do think shorter term, we'll be able to get through this run pretty successfully. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I also think next season... I, I do expect some more additions. That's the key, I do, yeah. I do think not only will we see signings coming in, we're going to buy a striker. We're going to buy at least one midfielder. Yeah. I also feel that one or two of the younger players may get more minutes. Kobe mainu has been getting quite a lot of minutes for a 17-year-old. He could end up yeah. more minutes. Zidane Iqbal could start featuring in and around the first team. Charlie uh, McNeil's going out on loan. Maybe he comes back into the fold. There's, there's so many players that I think from the, the youth or mm. the academy teams that could come up and also I expect us to make some signings but I understand where, you, where you're coming from we yeah. don't want the sort of boom and bust um, seasons that Liverpool have no um, one wants that no exactly and that is what you said there is crucial because you look at their midfield that started the game I think the other day was it Palace that they drew against I think it was Milner Henderson and was it Naby Keita I can't remember who it was anyway three of those players that I think we're starting games together in 2018. Right. Still starting in the midfield. So yeah. if United can constantly sort of like just sort of revolve and, and bring in an extra player here and there and you know slowly transition over the seasons, I think we'll be fine. But we've just got to make sure that we do that. We have got to make sure that we do that. Yeah. Um, with all that being said then, yeah. give us your predicted 11, the team that you think Eric Ten Hag is going to pick yeah. to face the Amers. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. Um, De Gea, I think that speaks for itself. He plays yeah. every week when he's fit. Yeah. Um, Wan Bissaka, Lindelof. I've rested Varane because of the reasons we spoke about. Yeah, I understand um, that. I think he's spoken in the past about you know his physical effects and mental effects of playing every single, basically twice a week for the last ten years. Um, and then you've got Lindelof, Martinez, Malassia. I've also given Luke Shaw um, a bit of a rest as well, just because I think he could do with one. Um, then we've got Sabitza, Casemiro, and Vegost in the ten. It could be Fernandez. And Vegost switching around, like Rashford on the left, Vegost up front, Fernandez in the 10. We know the kind of the drill, but I think that will be the front four. Um, maybe Anthony, but I'd like to see Sabitzer and Casemiro start because they've never started a game together. Um, and I thought Sabitzer looked excellent when he came on in the League Cup final. Wan Bissaka the same. So I think they did both deserve to start, um, but we can't rest Casemiro or Rashford. So yeah, I've gone with that. What do he's, you think? He's been a really good signing, Sabitzer. Yeah. It's mad that you get a last minute deadline day signing in January who is so good I know. and you can just come in and almost or I use the word almost make you forget about Christian Eriksen not yeah. quite but he's, he's done a job I know he's a different type of player yeah. but now we have another good option in midfield yeah. where had we not replaced Christian Eriksen we'd be massively weakened because he's been so good for us this season so yeah I see that we're close in the 10 seems to be more suited yeah. there the, the problem when you have him leading the line which we'll get to in a minute is just the lack of goals yeah. raise its head a little bit more than when he's in the 10 which you can sort of understand him. he's just give. banging it assist after assist like yeah, in the cup and that's okay um, but no I mean you rotate there and if, if uh, Eric Ten Hag follows your example it's still a strong team yeah. it's still you've, look, you've got class all over the pitch there so I wouldn't be too concerned if come Wednesday night that is the starting 11 yeah. if you go to mine slightly different not massively, uh. but you'll see I've brought in Maguire instead yeah. of Lindelof. I understand your point that Lindelof for Varane. I just feel that Maguire could do a job against West Ham. Yeah. And I feel like he might think, I'll give you some minutes because A, I need to rest Varane, and B, I need to give everyone who I, I might use in the future some minutes, and this is a good time to give you some. I've gone with uh, Fred Casemiro and Sabitzer. I think Bruno... He's played so many games, yeah. does need a rest. I, 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 I this, hope he does get a rest. Yeah, it just I doesn't think happen, this, does it? this is the game. I know Sabitzer, he's not an out and out 10, but he can play there. I think he can play yeah. anywhere in the sort of in the middle. He can play as a DM, play as an 8, play as a 10. I've gone with where goals leading the line. The question marks around his goal scoring will come up. I do think he's going to score. Yeah. And I am going to say that before every single game until he does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Rashford, enough said. Um, and 
Jaden Sancho. I expect them two to swap over. When they play, they tend to swap over. They, they both go, they did it in the cup yeah. final, didn't they? Where you and it, it can be a little bit annoying at times. I would rather Marcus just stayed on the left. Yeah. Um, but I think this is what will happen because obviously this predicted, not preferred. Yeah. I've gone with Wamba Saka over Delo. Again, though, you could have picked either or because those two seem to be sort of swapping constantly yeah. as well, which is, is good to see. Uh, should we talk about West Ham? Yeah. Uh, hello, is that West Ham? Um, they've got a couple of players who are decent, haven't they? They've got um, Declan Rice. Yeah. He's He's been linked with a move they've to Manchester United. They've been shit this season, let's be honest. They've been awful. David Moyes is sort of clinging on for dear life for 16th in the Premier League. We've got to beat him. Is that, is that stat true? Go on. What, right, Gerard Bowen, Premier League stats here. 24 appearances, four goals. Oh, no. sorry, top goal scorer for West Ham in all competitions. He's got eight goals, so he's their top scorer in all competitions with 32 appearances and eight goals. That's a bit deflating. But four goals in the Premier League. That's terrible. Yeah. Not for him. Yeah. Like, he's doing well. But if that's your, your most, you know, yeah. prolific goal scorer, you've got issues. And they've spent money on strikers over the last few years as well. They've got, um, they, they obviously bought Alaire for like 40 million quid. Um, what's the Italian striker that they've got now? Hey, I've lost count. Was I've um, lost, Scamacca, what's going on there? who's not scoring either. Mich- what's happening with Michel Antonio? Well, was Michel Antonio had his 18 monthly eight goals in nine games. He had that about 18 months ago, so he's not scored since, which right. is what he does. Um, but it's they just they overachieved last season, I think, or they achieved what they deserved, which was. Was it ninth that they finished in the end? They did finish quite high. Do you remember there was that little flurry where people were going, oh, David Moyes has done all right. Maybe yeah. United got rid of him too soon. Ridiculous. Yeah, he did he, well, he, though. You know, he didn't deserve to get stats at United, did he? But now they're back to that point, and I say this every time about West Ham, where you start hearing sentences that make no sense that are not backed up in reality whatsoever, like the West Ham style of play. And the Academy of Football. The Academy of Football, and you think, no one except 1,800 West Ham fans <laughs> think that there is a West Ham style of play. No other fan in the country looks at West Ham and goes, they're not, they're not living up to their potential. And you know they're more not living up to their history. No one considers them to have any sort of I, identity I, I whatsoever. I don't think any West Ham player thinks no. they've got a West Ham style but of play. But they talk about it like, we should be playing better football than this. They've done it under every, like under Pellegrini, they did it. You're like, he's won La Liga, I think, with Real Madrid. It certainly managed no, Real Madrid. I think he managed, I think he, he did that thing, didn't he, was an anomaly where they got the record number of points but finished second. Yeah, he's got like 99 points yeah. or 100 points for Real yeah. Madrid. But he did win the league at City. Yeah, he won the league with City and he can't instill this West Ham style of play. Maybe it's West Ham that's the problem. So I'll be so good if we lose because uh, they're just one of the least likeable teams in the Premier League I think <laughs> they just go but ideas way above their station with nothing to back it up so hopefully um, United can win but we've got a thousand games in a thousand days and we're 900 games into that so it's going to be a tricky one give us your score prediction then with everything you've said I'm going to go the fact that it's Old Trafford sort of heartens me because we have gone to West Ham and lost a few times I'm not saying they're shit they're Upton just... Park can be a difficult one I saw us yeah. get beat 4-0 once there yeah. I think it was Jonathan Spector got a brace well we lost to the, we lost them at the Olympic Stadium as well didn't we a couple of years ago like yeah. they're an annoying team they're a good team but they're not like like I said they haven't got this like aura about them where you're scared it just happens to be that sometimes they beat you so I'm going to go 1-0 United 1-0 United I'm going to go I'll go 3 1 United. Yes. But we want, we want, more importantly, we want to hear from you. So get your phone out, film yourself doing a 30 second score prediction and send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. We want to hear your score predictions. We'll use that for the uh, the build up to the game on Wednesday. Joe's going to be here for the watch along, yes. so you can be part of that too. Joe, where can people find you? Uh, Sloppy Joe's podcast. Make sure you check that out. Uh, we've got an episode coming out tonight with Ethan, who's a Newcastle fan, going over the Carabao Cup final. So make sure you yeah. check that out. Yeah. Uh, yes, make sure you check that out. You know where to find me, Jay Moy. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. That's been Joe. I've been Jay. This has been the FA Cup preview against West Ham. Thanks for watching.